Hello, welcome to another video, and today I wanted to talk through all of the curses in the Chaos Chamber and what they all do and which ones to take. So, I'm going to be splitting this video up into two, just a breakdown of the curses, going in depth of what they all do, and then I'm going to share a personally made, uh, like, priority list. Like, so uh, the high ones of the list are the ones that I'm more likely to take. So, if I get a choice of two curses, I choose the one that's higher up the list. So, first, what are curses? Well, at the end of the first Chaos Chamber room, you'll be met with a choice of one of two curses. After this, you can then opt in to select more by choosing portals with the Dragon Lord on, and he will offer you some curses to make your Chaos Chamber run more difficult. Each curse will increase the amount of crystals you gain from that point onwards, so it's always good to maximize the amount of curses you pick early on until a place where you're comfortable. If you're confident with your build, uh, in just normal Chaos Chamber play, I highly recommend trying to take as many curses as you, as you can, and then from there, eliting your rooms to maximize the crystals you get. So, um, every single curse will give you a plus 25% crystal drop chance on enemy death. This is just on every single curse. It appears to stack as well. Um, so after taking a couple towards the end of the run, I noticed that basically every single enemy is dropping crystals. Uh, I'm not sure if that's just like a natural progression thing, but it does seem to stack. But in general, just note that every curse has this plus 25% drop. Crystal, uh, sorry. Curses are broken into three categories, easy, medium, and hard. Easy curses give you a plus 30% bonus crystals to every crystal you pick up. Uh, this, of course, stacks as well. The first one, Rend and Rupture. So when enemies are at 15% total HP, you can melee them and they will just instantly die and they'll explode into health potions. Be wary of this one though, I think it steals second win, so heads up for that. Trust in Magic, you get minus 50% health and plus 50% maximum ward. Does what it says in the tin, amazing with unarmored defense. Watch your step. Encounters have additional traps. So... This is like the, the, on a wall, it'll just like spew elements out of it, or on the ground, there'll be like a grate with spikes that'll come up. It's kind of like more of those spawn. Encroaching darkness, save your soul time is reduced. Party time. Killing an enemy has a chance to drop loot explosion, which means um, you'll just get more loot in general. And if you get critical hit kills, you'll, this is guaranteed, and you'll just get tons of loot. Anarchy. And this one gives you plus 25% gun damage, however, its downside is it also doubles your recoil and weapon spread, so it can be quite awkward with the high spread weapons. And then finally, Critical Connoisseur, minus 50% to all body shot damage, plus 50% to all crit damage, so pretty good for boss melts, and if you're doing lots of critical hits, great for gun builds. Uh, on to mediums. Nasty Spill, this is like pool party, so whenever you deplete an enemy health bar, uh, like four puddles will spew out in each direction, and these puddles will last and they'll do a lot of damage to the player and the enemies, though do note, enemies that uh, die by these puddles will not drop crystals. Magma Breach, a pool of lava will spawn in encounters, it usually spawns under your feet if you are still for a couple of seconds, it's horrid, I hate it. Workplace Hazards, non-boss encounters, now have additional hazards. I think this one's just meteors. So on the ground, you'll see these circles, and then a meteor will come and hit that circle. Uh, healing Vengeance, when you kill an enemy, a heart will drop out. If that heart will then seek out enemies and heal them. Uh, pretty simple, they give you second wins, pretty good. Trapped Hearts, when hit, enemies have a chance to drop a spinner. This is an elemental spinner that spins around. I don't mind it if you jump a lot, but yeah. Uh, you can destroy them and they, and they explode to deal damage, and I think you get second wins on them too. Uh, break it up. Uh, when enemies are close to each other, they gain a damage and fire rate increase. Nullify. When damaged, enemies gain 3% damage reduction against the type of damage received for 3 seconds, stacks up to 20 times. This one's horrible. Frozen Vengeance. This one's even worse. Killing enemy has a chance to release a Frost Buddy. Frost Buddies will constantly chase you, and as you damage them, they will release Frost Novas. Uh, I, I dislike them a lot. It's just like, lots of cryo. Onto the hard ones, I always try and take these ones because, oh, by the way, medium is plus 60% bonus crystals. So easy is 30, medium is 60, and then hard is plus 120% bonus crystals. So we want these hard modifiers. 
Spectral Vengeance, killing an enemy is a chance to release a Spectre, which follows you. If a Spectre touches you, you instantly enter Save Your Soul. Uh, I believe the spawn cap of two is still here, uh, kind of like the uh, post-mortem uh, modifier in Borderlands 3. I think it's got a spawn cap of two of these. They move quite slowly, they're easy to kill. They give you second wins in this game as well. Um, as long as you're aware, not too, too bad. Uh, stay back. If you are close to an enemy, it will attach a beam to you, dealing constant damage. Quite nasty. Elemental Overflow. Uh, when you enter a map, a random element is chosen. All an enemies within that map are immune to that element, and when they die, they release a Nova. And it appears that bosses will always be immune to dark magic. So if you've got lots of dark magic damage, uh, be weary your boss damage might uh, <laughs> take a nosedive with this one. Buff baddies. Uh, there'll be these little boxes that fly around and attach to enemies, giving them buffs. It's typically things like health regen and stuff like that. Bulwark baddies. It's the same thing, but they glow very brightly and they make the enemy immune, so you have to kill the baddie before you can kill the enemy. Toothless. Uh, minus 75% critical hit damage. Uh, just less damage. No one likes Toothless. Searing Tether. Uh, this one's not too bad. It's basically like Stay Back, but the enemies tether to each other. So if you stood between two enemies, you'll take damage. But you can get as close to them as you want, and it, and it won't hit you. It's, it's only if you, like, cross the path between enemies. Out Damn Dot. Um, so your status effect damage against enemies is significantly reduced. So if you're not running a dot build, it's free. If you are running a dot build, avoid this. And then finally, Roguelite. No longer enter save your soul before dying, all enemies drop health potions upon death. So, it can keep you out of save your soul because of all the health potions. Really, really great. But if you do get downed, yeah, it's just an instant bleed out. Even if you get a kill in the save your soul animation, it won't pick you up, you'll just die. So those are all the curses. Um, you want to try and prioritize the harder ones if you can, just for those bonus crystals. Uh, if you want a resource that you can go back to in the description and the comments, I'll put Ancient Runes list, that's what I used to make this video, um, where he just put all of that inf information in one neat spot so you can just save that link and you can refer to it whenever you need. And now on screen now, I'll put up my uh, curse priority list in some form or another. Uh, so basically, the ones at the top, I take over the ones at the bottom. So out them dot, searing tether, spectral vengeance, buff baddies, and bulwark baddies are all free for me. I don't like bul bulwark baddies at all, but I take it any over any of the others simply because it is a hard modifier and you get those crystals. If I am speedrunning, however, I do avoid it. Into some of the media ones, healing vengeance, workplace hazards, and break it up, I all see as free as well. So if a hard isn't available, I'll take one of those. And then from here, I find some of the more mediums and hard just annoying. So I basically just have all the easy ones from this point. Party time, trust in magic, trapped hearts is in there, watch your step, random rupture, anarchy, encroaching darkness, critical connoisseur. I only take critical connoisseur if I feel like my build will benefit, otherwise I, I do just avoid it. Of course, some of these are situational based on like how the run's going, what curses I already have, what build setup I'm doing. So it's not entirely strict, there is no best, but... Uh, as a general rule of thumb, these are my preferences. Uh, Roguelite and Nasty Spill, uh, these ones will move up and down depending on how how I'm feeling. Like, is this a Roguelite run? Yes or no. If I'm doing a Maker run, obviously it's not a Roguelite run unless I'm feeling really spicy. Um, and then after those, it's just the ones that I just try my best to avoid. Nullify, Ellie Overflow, Magma Breach, Stay back, frozen vengeance, and toothless. I hate all of those. No, thank you. So, yeah, uh, that is all of the curses in Tiny Teen Wonderland's Chaos Chamber. Don't, well, we'll see if they add more. Um, it'd be cool if they added more, some interesting ones. Uh, I always wanted a very hard modifier in BL3 that worked like the cartel spawning thing, where you kill an enemy and they spawn into more enemies. Uh, I I'd love to see that. But yeah, we'll uh, have to see if they do expand this list, but this is the list at this moment in time. I hope this helps you out figure out what the curses are, since the game doesn't tell you until you take them, and at that point it might be too late. So yeah, um, thank you so very, very much for watching. Have a wonderful rest of your evening. Stay safe, stay awesome. I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.